name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I am the host of this internet ministry known as the Mighty, Mighty, Mighty. Mm. Angel Snub Number Seven, your brother and hopefully your friend, Talib Even Rock. What truly needs to happen in this place called the United States of America, a place they say and they claim is a melting pot. Did I say pot? I mean, a melting pot. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry. Slip of the tongue. Sort of early in the morning. So excuse me if I fall over my words just a little bit. A place of great diversity of humanity. There are people from all over this planet gathered in this spot. But we're not going to speak about the diversity. We're going to speak about the relationship between the Caucasian people in power of this nation and their citizens of whom they control, of whom they guide, of whom they influence whom they dominate and have done so for at least 400 years. We want to talk about the relationship between the Caucasian of whom used to be the slave master and their citizens who used to be called slaves. I know for many black people that's sort of embarrassing to know that you are a child of slaves and you dress up in fancy clothes and you drive Cadillacs and navigators and you make million dollars playing basketball and rapping and maybe you are the multi-million dollar uh, CEO of some white corporation. Whatever you may be, you do, you do not want to be reminded when it's all said and done, you are a child of a slave. Well, I am sorry. That is your reality. We are the children of slaves. I don't care how you dress yourself up. I don't care how much makeup you put on yourself. I don't care how many nose jobs you get. I don't care how much you color your hair blonde. I don't care what you do to look white. I don't care what you do to be something that you're not when it's all said and done and you will be reminded just like the transsexual that was born a man you are a man if you was born a woman they will remind you you was a woman you was a man so black people in america why don't we stop trying to be somebody who will not and accept your reality you are and i am the children of slaves we are the descendant of slaves, no matter how you want to try to escape that reality. So go ahead and drink. So go ahead and smoke your reefer. Go ahead and do all those things. And when you sober up for those few minutes that you sober, you still a child of a slave. I'll be waiting to remind you when you come out of your, when you come off of your high. But there needs to be a serious talk with white America on race relations in this nation. I cannot judge white America or Caucasian America based on the few white people that come to my channel and comment. Because they are just individuals. They do not represent, nor have they been assigned a place to represent 
the Caucasian people or white people of this nation. So what they have to say means nothing to me and what they say on our video should mean nothing to us because they don't run nothing, they don't control nothing, they just can run their mouth and give individual opinion so it means nothing. But there needs to be a serious talk among real black leadership. I'm not talking about these Uncle Tom dark European type. Now, I will not say that we should not allow them to speak. They should be there. But when white America speaks to black America, you need to stop looking over those who are kissing you in your butt, trying not to hurt your feelings. The ones that you need to really speak to are the ones that's honest with you, speaking right in your face, telling you how they feel openly and honestly. And if they hurt your feelings, they don't give a damn. That's the one that you need to be speaking with. The ones that want to kiss you in your butt and try to compromise giving more to you than what you deserve, that's what has caused and continue to cause this condition. Because they don't know no better. In a court of law, when you have one lawyer versus another lawyer, they must speak to the best interest of their client. These dark Europeans, so-called leadership, with a black face, they are not speaking for the hurt and the pain of those in the grassroots, those in the lower classes of our people who yearn to be, to breathe free, breathe free, who suffer day in and day out. They are the victims of injustice day in and day out because unlike Senator so-and-so Negro, Congressman so-and-so Negro, they don't have a pension plan. They don't have a half a million dollar house. They don't have, they, they cannot be comfortable like Senator so-and-so in this oppression. These, these are the wrong ones to talk to because they are comfortable. If you really want to talk to your citizens and really know what's going on in the black community, you need to talk to the suffering, those who don't have nothing, the have not. That's the ones you need to speak with. You need to ignore those who are comfortable because those who are comfortable and their belly is full can't speak for those who are starving. So to be fair and to be just, there needs to be open and honest dialogue between those Caucasian people in power and influence with other, with those of us in the black community who truly seek and represent the suffering and the complaint of your dark citizens in this nation. There must be talk. But really, since Caucasian people and Caucasian Jews, you own the television station, you own cable, you own the mass media, if you really wanted to talk with black people about their hurt and pain, and if you really gave a damn about our suffering, you would have been able to talk a long time ago. But you really don't want to have a talk on race relations because you don't, re you don't want to be reminded that you are the children of slave owners. You are the children of those who lynch black people for no reason, rape black women for no reason tore and feathered us, terrorized our people for over 300 years and continue to do that to this day on a covert level, not out in the open like you used to, but you use your educational system, you use your law and government to continue the slave activity that your fathers once did. And you know this, but you know the masses of our people since they have accepted slavery as a way of life they don't even know this because they don't know what it is to be free. Slavery is all they know. So as long as they remain quiet, why, why talk about 
This is no issue. This is no issue. This is no issue because you are not hurting. So since you're not hurting, it makes no difference. And since these who are suffering really are not making an attempt to show you that they are indeed hurting, or they fake, they fake, and you pacify us with a little welfare. You pacify us with a little something here and there. It is only scraps from the table of this great nation that we have given our lives. We paid our taxes. Free labor for over 300 years. Underpaid labor for over 100 years. The only beneficiary of this relationship are Caucasian white people. So of course, why would you want to have a serious discussion on race with everything right now? Why mess up a good thing? <laughs> That's how it is. When you have two people in a marriage and one person believes that something is wrong while the other one, if he's not being affected, what's what you complaining about? Because they don't I mean they still get they still get all the benefits of the marriage while the other person feels sorrow, feels grief, dissatisfaction, disappointed. But you don't feel that because you lost connection, you lost the love for your spouse. And see in this situation. You never loved black people to begin with. We were here for your self gratification. We were here to be your labor bearers. No more no less. We were not brought here to be your friends. We were not here to be your lovers. We were here to be tools. Used. And now these tools need to be thrown away, but you really don't know how to get rid of the, the tools. This is a complicated tool. And that's how we are treated in this nation, like tools. There is no love. If there was love, you would see it in the activity. We don't see the activity. We hurt. You don't feel our hurt because you don't hurt. So since you don't hurt, it's impossible for us to hurt. And you don't give a damn. You know when you love somebody, when they hurt, even though you don't, you can feel, you can feel, you can have compassion for them. When they get sick, you, you feel sort of sick because of your love. You don't want to see them in that condition. You don't want to see your loved one hurt. You don't want to see them sick. But see, you don't love. White America does not love black people because when we cry and we tell you that we're hurting and there's a problem, you look the other way. And you even got the nerve to say, y'all racist. Y'all niggers is racist. You're just like me. How am I like you? I did not enslave you. How am I like you? I never denied you the right to vote. How am I any way like you? I've done nothing to you. So when you have attitudes like that in a marriage, the only true solution, brothers and sisters, and I'm not going to name call or nothing like that, but I want to talk to those people, and you know who you are, that might be considered Uncle Tom, or I might consider Dark European. When you're in a relationship like that, an exploitive and abusive relationship, come on now. It is time, if you are in your right mind, it is time to talk about divorce. Divorce. Hold on, go on to the video number two, I believe. Yes. Before 
there is actual divorce, usually there is a threat from one spouse to another that I am going to leave. And so one day you sit down with your spouse and you say, look, and you try to explain the problems that we're having in this marriage. And you tell them, look, I can't do this no more. And if you can't change this, and if you can't change that, then you tell them, or you give them an ultimatum or a threat. I, I'm out of here. I, I got to go. If that spouse has love and continues to genuinely care about you, they would say, no, don't do that. Let us get, let us get, maybe we can go to therapy. We're having trouble in our marriage. And therapy means you bring in an outside person that can be the mediator between you and your spouse and you tell them your problem and maybe they can help y'all reconcile y'all differences and try to keep the marriage together. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you this. If we as a people threaten to leave and the Caucasian people of this nation took it seriously, then you would see, we would see the reality of our situation. You don't have to go nowhere. Just say, look, if this don't happen or blah, 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 we got to go. Let them know I'm out of here. Threaten to leave. Then the real white people, the real Caucasian people that some of y'all in love with, you will see the real them begin to come out. Because if they have genuine concern and care for us as equal citizens and believe that we are actually a part of this nation, then they will say, don't talk that way. Let us begin to set up meetings all over this nation and discuss our problems in this nation. But see, some of y'all know what the reality is. You know in your heart that they don't give a damn about us. You know it. That's why you won't even threaten to leave like an abused woman in a house where a man is beating her day in and day out. You have fallen in love and you think that exploitation and abuse is love. So the first step is to threaten to leave. And maybe that might be the end of the situation. The next step, since you're not taking me seriously, since white America looks at you and me, even though we threaten to leave, because this has this is nothing new. Black folks have been threatening to leave, some of us, for a little while now. And most of us are still here. So chances are the racist Caucasian people in power and those of whom they influence on the lower levels of class, they will look at you as a joke. They will not take your threat seriously. So the next step is separation and divorce. Now, you may say, separate. See, the thing about our separation is that we are already separated. On CNN, that news network, they did a story about the state of black America. If you was not already separated, why is there a state of black America if America is all the same? It is not the same. You have black America, you have Chinese America, 
Japanese America, Native American America, Mexican America. Everybody's doing their own thing. You living in the same house, in the same space, but everybody doing their own thing. Now you pay your taxes together and some, you might go to war together and to a music concert together, but when all that's said and done, everybody go to their own places because there is no true melting pot here. There is no true unification here. Everybody doing their own thing. Because it should not be the state of black America. It should be the state of America. What is wrong with our citizens? Why are our black citizens having problems? That's what it should be. But we separate. That's why it's the black community. It's not just the community or American community. It's the black community. That's a black congressman. That's a black this. That's a black that. There's already separation. But the thing about all of this is that there is no benefit to you in this separation. And anything that you get in this relationship goes to the other spouse. So you live or you're in a relationship that gives us no benefit. So I want to say to the dark European, I want to say to the Uncle Tom mentality type person, those God bless America and you're licking white folks in their ass. I want you to think about it. Or are you really so sick that you love them more than your own children? Do you really want to pass this pathetic, pitiful condition to your children? It took 400 years, listen, it took 400 years for you to get a so-called black president. What is it? Why are you so in love? How would, how would a woman feel that it took 40 years to get a wedding ring? Oh, baby, I, I, you know, I, don't, I don't have the money to get you a wedding ring. But, uh, you know, I, I get you one. I love you. And you don't get a wedding ring to 40 years later. We've been here for 400 years. We've been called citizens of this nation. But we don't enjoy the wedding ring. We don't enjoy the fruits of this nation. We get the seeds and we get the core of the apple and the peel. But we don't get the apple pie. Only the crumbs and what they don't want. Is that a real relationship? Is that is that what people are in marriage for? When you are in a relationship with a man or a woman, you are married. Whatever that person has belongs to you and what you have belongs to them. It is shared equality and that's what this nation is supposed to represent. Equality for all its citizens. But that's a lie. Because the Asian people have their own piece of the pie. And they have, those over there got theirs. And they recently got here, the black man and woman of America, been here for 400 years. And on the bottom rung, is that because of us or is it be by design? It is by design. And we have become the dog. And everybody else is the parasite that suck off our blood. All these other communities suck off of us. You are in and we are in a parasitic relationship. And I want to ask the dark European, the Uncle Tom, seriously think about what you're doing. Who cares about how you feel? What about your children? Is this what you want for us as a people to continue to be somebody else? Dog that they can come and suck our blood anytime they feel like it. Is that really what you want? And then you wanna, then you wanna, and you then you don't understand why when you come to black people that won't better why they don't like your ass. You want somebody to continue to suck our blood. That's over. That's over. We are already separated, but we're getting no benefit from the separation. We're still hooked up with the spouse.
that don't give a damn about us. Never loved us. It was a forced relationship to begin with. There should be an open, honest dialogue of race relations in this country. But there is none because those, the other party, no sweat. They're not suffering. They're doing pretty good. And they never loved you to begin with. You was just a whore to them. You just a prostitute to them. A woman to use and throw away. And some whores and prostitutes fall in love with their John. And that's how we have become in this nation. You have become the white man's bitch. You have become the white man's hoe. And you don't fall in love with your John. Your trick. Mm -hmm. Well. That's over. There is a awakening. And I want to say to the Uncle Tom and the dark Europeans, you're not going to stand in the way because whether you like it or not and the children that's coming from your flesh, they are different from you. It is over. It is time for true separation where we benefit. So now, if you can't have an open and honest dialogue with these people. And the only reason why we're going to do that is because we have given so much to this nation. We have a lot of assets. We bled for this country. We've sweat. Our tears are here. But now it's time since it seems as though we are not wanted really. It is time to separate, which has already happened, it is best to seek divorce. Many of you have gone through a, through a, a ooh, man, I, tongue tie. Many of us have gone and experienced divorce. It is a hurtful thing. Just by my talking about separation and divorce from Caucasian people, it brings hurt and pain. Don't say that. This is America. But you have to face the reality of the marriage. When you're going through a marriage, everybody hurts. It's a hurtful thing between the husband and the wife. It's a hurtful thing and the children because now the children see that's the thing about the dark European. They are, some of them are caught because they do have some kind of love for their black self. But they also have this love for the life that the Caucasian people have given them. Because some of them are comfortable. They love their navigator. They love their basketball contracts. They love their face on MTV and BET. They love this even though all of us don't benefit. They know that this is an illusion of a happy marriage. This is an illusion of a happy marriage. They all know this, but I'm caught up because I love white man. My best friend is Billy Bob. What about my friend Billy Bob? Come on, Talik. What about Billy Bob? <laughs> He's my next door neighbor. He's a good white man. This is not about Billy Bob. This is about Black people as a people and white people as a people, we are two nations living in a house. And we are a nation in a nation. And clearly somebody got to go. And it would be us because they run this house. We have no choice. They're not going to go nowhere. So if anybody's going to divorce and separate, we are going to have to cause it. And we're going to have to leave this house that has not given us love, but has given us terrorism and exploitation for 400 years. Going on to three. Let's talk about it. Three, come on. 
So now to bring this little talk to its conclusion, if we are going to threaten to separate ourselves, then actually seek separation and eventually divorce from a nation that we have outgrown. We have become a mature people. It is clear we are not wanted. And if we are an adult people and we are truly free and this spouse that was given to us involuntarily does not want to treat us as an equal partner in this relationship, then we need to begin the process of separation. So the question may arise, well, Brother Talib, where is it that we're going? Where are we going to go? First of all, you have to be clear that you are ready to go. Because I tell you this, once you decide, once a good percentage of black people in this nation, we decide it's Splitsville, it's time to go. You don't have to worry about where you're going. Somebody will take us somewhere. In fact, if the white man, the white people, the Caucasian people of this nation, if they thought you were serious, they said no. Chances are they would say, no, don't do that. Look, we can work things out. See, you don't understand your value, black man. You don't understand your value, black woman. You don't have to beg and plead and wait another 400 years for a black president and growl and spit and scratch where you don't itch and all this stuff y'all been doing for the last 300 years. You don't have to do that. You are valuable. If the white man in America don't want you, somebody, even other white people somewhere, will take you in. You don't have to worry about finding a place to go. Because we are not refugees, poor refugees that because of a war, now they are driven away from their homes. We are scientists, we are engineers, we are educators, we are lawyers, we're governors, we're president. We are so many things. We are great basketball players. We are great, so many things. I don't even want to go through the list because y'all know y'all are great. So if you are so great black man, if we are so great black people, why are we putting ourselves in a position not to take advantage of our own value. Why are we not looking for our best interest? When you are a sports person, you go to the team that will give you the most. LeBron James left Cleveland, not because of the money, because he won a championship. So he decided to go somewhere where he could get a championship. We need to put ourselves in a position so that we can become the great people we actually are. As long as we are under this type of behavior, this type of condition, we cannot grow as a people like we should. And any type of accomplishment that we get, the racist Caucasian people will take it as their own or they will control it, like rap music. We, there is no doubt, black folks, the children of black people created rap music, but we don't own it no more. We don't control it. Now it belongs to our ex-slave masters. Children, we need to stop that. We need to stop creating and somebody else giving, getting the benefits. That's why there needs to be a separation. Now many Caucasian people out there in the audience, they clap their hands. 
Listen to listen to Angel Stop Number Seven. Listen to this Talik guy. Bravo, bravo. All y'all Negroes need to leave America. But in any, but in any divorce, there comes a division of marital assets. You don't leave a marriage without something in your hand, unless you choose to. We have died here. We have bled here. We paid our taxes here. We have suffered here. We have assets here. And we want those assets to go with us. And if we can't take them with us, then we're going to get the value of what those assets are worth. But brothers and sisters, you should not be scared. Just like you tell your grown children, it's time to get out of your house. It's time for us, even if white people treated us good, brothers and sisters, listen, it's time that we as a people, it's time for us to go on our own. There's so much in you, in your children, in yourself, to stay here in this condition, in this place, hinders your own development. You know how it is. As long as you live in your mama's house, your daddy's house, there's only so far that you can go. But when a, when that child grows up and gets his own house, gets his own car, do his own thing, he begins to, he is a possibility, he can surpass what his parents was. But as long as he stay in the house with his parents, he can't grow. And you will agree with that. So now here we are, a people in this nation with so much talent, so much creativity, who have value, but you don't see your value. But others see your value. When you begin to put that value on yourself, that's why others know your value. That's why when you say, see, look, see, cause just because this man don't appreciate this woman, when she leaves him, she might find a man that will see her value and they might be married the rest of their life in happiness. But see, these white folks, and even in your mind, this Caucasian telling you, you ain't nothing. Nobody else wants you and you really believe it. That's not true. There are a whole lot of other countries, brothers and sisters. They love your music. They love who we are. They see your value. They'll be happy to help us leave this exploitive and abusive relationship so that you can do something for yourself and become, and instead of talking about what Egypt did, what our forefathers did, you can do it yourself. Oh man, you just don't know how great you are. Come on. So the brothers and sisters, I know that you love America. This is the only house we know. Just like when you was in your parents' house. It's the only house. It's the only life that you know. But once you begin to leave your parents' house, how do you feel now? How do you feel owning your own house? How do you feel raising your children the way you feel they should be raised? Doing your own thing. That's how we should feel as a nation of people. Has nothing to do with it. The hatred of white people. It's called... It's called, my friends, growing up. Ain't that right? That's what you show, that's what you tell your children. So we as a people need to grow up. We've grown beyond this. It is time to divorce. You don't have to worry about having a place to go. When we as a people, not all of us want to go, let them stay. But a certain amount of us, a good percentage, once people take you serious, there's a lot of countries, there's a lot of places, I'm telling you, that would be happy to take us in. Because all our talents will go with us. We have made America look great in music, in the arts, and, and even in the sciences, things they don't tell us about. They get all the credit. It is time that you get, what's do you? What's wrong with get, even when you're on the job? 
Don't you want somebody to recognize what you do? Yeah. So it's time for you to get your recognition, black man. It's time for you to get your recognition, black woman. What's wrong with that? It's time that you bring value to yourself. So when they see this black skin, they're not only seeing drug dealers, pimps, prostitutes, welfare recipients, you know, all that negative garbage. When they see this black skin, they're going to say, man, them some bad people. They're going to compare you and me to ancient Egypt. I'm telling you this. It's the truth. They know it. You don't see your value. Just like an abused woman don't see her value. But once she go get away from that abusive man, she go to school, educate herself. And man, next thing you know, she might be the secretary of state in her own country. <laughs> Not just America. You underestimate yourself because you are scared of leaving your parents. You are scared of leaving your master's house. You free. It is time, black man and woman, that we act free and stop being scaredy cats. We have become institutionalized. You can still have white friends. You can still... You and Billy Bob can still be friends, but Billy Bob got to understand you got to, it's time for you to grow up. And most white folks who are sincere and understand, they are, they are not going to tell you not to move in that, in that direction. They're going to say, go, go, go. But those who want to continue to exploit you and leech off you, they're going to say, why you want to leave America? What's wrong? Why are y'all thinking like that? And then they, they might offer you some more scraps, give you some more pacification. Don't go for it no more. It is time. In conclusion, brothers and sisters, it is time that you stop thinking about your own self. Think about your babies. Think about your children. And you and I if we decide to move in this di direction, we will become the greatest for a long time. We'll be the greatest generation that our people have produced. And future generations will always honor you for making the decision so they can be great. Don't you want to be part of history? So in the future, they'll say back in 2010, them black people took care of business. That's why we are the great and powerful people that we are. Great and powerful, but honest and fair to white people, Chinese, Native American, and we are fair and just to all of humanity, and we bring love and peace and uh, caring to animal life and care to the planet itself. And through our example, all of humanity will, ro will rotate around us like they rotated around us in the very beginning. But somewhere, somebody went corrupt. And now we are in the situation that we're in, but now it's time that we get ourselves out of that situation and our progress will cause the progress in the direction that we call righteousness to all human beings, bringing the heaven on earth that you talk about in the Bible, giving you the hereafter on this planet right now that they talk about in the Quran. Hereafter what? Hereafter I was a slave. Hereafter I was an abused person. Hereafter evil. Hereafter hatred. Now you're living that which you once only could imagine and believe in. Now it has become your reality. Thank you for listening. Let's talk about this for real. Open and honest. This is your brother Talik Ibn Ra. The Angel Snuffed Up 7. This was. Think for ourselves people. This was. That is. The Reality's Temple on Earth.